guys, this is FusionForge, and this is going to be video number 7 of the Entree tutorial. Now I will show you how to make a dog bowl in Entree. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, make sure that, uh, without starting the sketch or anything, make sure that your workspace units are set to millimeters. Then confirm it. Now start a sketch on the front plane using Shift-S. And then go to the front, front plane using Shift-1. Now, we're going to actually insert an image into our design. So either go up, so go up here and click on Insert Image. If you don't see the option between linear pattern and dimensioning, click the stroke down, and then you'll see it. Now we can insert an image from current documents or other documents. For this example, I'm going to import the two images that I have uh, in the description right here. I'm going to import both of them into this current document. Now, as you can see, I get the notifications tab, and then. These two are going to say upload in progress, then upload and complete it. Now, X out of the notification stem, and then import both of these pictures into your current document. Unfortunately, Onshape does not support document calibration as uh, a few other things, as a few other softwares do. So we just have to use these as references, which is why I also made these sketch, uh, sketches instead of the finished, doc, finished product. So now hover over this, go up, make sure we click L and then Q to make sure that this is a construction line. Click and then move downwards. This construction line should be 10 millimeters, as you can see right here. And then this line should be 110 millimeters. Now click escape. Now we are actually going to make this portion of the entire uh, sketch right here. We are not. We're actually going to make this outer portion at the end when the rest of the sketch has been completed. Now press G for corner rectangle. Hover over this point right here and then go upwards to automatically apply the vertical constraint to this rectangle. Now drag outwards. It should have a a length of 10 millimeters and a width of 2.54 millimeters. Now, zoom in, click escape, click on this line right here, and then delete it. And then press in D, dimension this line to the download line. It should be 2.5 millimeters from the uh, construction line. And then click on this line, and then this, and then re enter the 10 millimeters. Uh, meters previously stated because when you delete this line right here it automatically removes all of these all of the outwards dimensions now press l make another line that is 55 millimeters long as we can see right here and then press d this line should from the bottom line should have a distance of 100 degrees now zoom in a little bit while still having dimensioning equipped press on this point and this line and make sure that their distance is 2.54 millimeters. Now, draw another line up here. It doesn't matter what its length is. Doesn't it should not be parallel to this line? And then make it equivalent to this line of 55 degrees. Now, click L, and then make another line that has the horizontal constraint, and it should be 15 millimeters from the point right here. And then when we go down, we want to click, we want to go or hover over this point right here to have it horizontally constrained to this point. Now, click, and then we want to click it right here. And then we want to go escape and switch to degrees. Now that both of these are done, we want to constrain both of these to be 100 degrees apart from each other. And then we want to click L, make another line that is 2.54 millimeters apart, go right here, and then click on this line right here. Now, go back up here, click on this line, and then move down it. These two lines should not be connected for now. Now press D. Dimension both of these lines to be 2.54 millimeters apart from each other. You can put these close here to be able to make it easily viewable. And now, 
take, drag these two points, and combine them to form this line right here. Now you can move this sketch however you want. Now click D, and then dimension both of these points, or no, not both of these points, this point and this line to be 2.54 millimeters apart from each other. Now we have perfectly replicated this point of the sketch. Now we want to zoom back in here and mess around with this. Now, while having, having dimension equipped, click on this bottom line of this sketch uh, of this picture right here and make it whatever millimeters you want. For the purpose of this, I'll make it 25 millimeters and then zoom in. So now, looking at this sketch right here. This is a rectangle, these are two arc, and this is another rectangle. So let's begin by making the first rectangle, which looks like a corner rectangle using G. The advantage of corner rectangles is that you can pre-make all of these constraints that you previously would be more annoying to make if had we used a center rectangle. So hover over it, go down, make sure that the vertical constraint is applied, and then this corner rectangle should have a length of 10 millimeters and a width of 1.5 millimeters. Now, what we want to do is click Escape, click D, and then if we zoom in here, click on both of these, we want this to be 0 0.2 degrees apart from each other. So 0 0.2 degrees, or 0 0.2 millimeters, my, my mistake. Zoom out, and then drag this closer. Now, delete this line right here to make this line able to be extruded. Click D and then make this line 11 millimeters rather than the 10 that we had previously. Now zoom out. We can see this as a second rectangle right here. We don't see any specific dimensions from this other than its length, its width. But we can see that it's actually being controlled by these two arcs right here. So let's make this a, the second rectangle. Press G, and then this rectangle should have a length of 8.388, a width of 1.5, and then we should drag it to be closer, actually to be 0 0.2 degrees away from this line right here. So we can just click on these two and configure that to be 0.2. And drag this a little bit closer. Now delete this line right here. Make sure that this line is vertically constrained to this. And then press A for three point arc. This arc should be both of these and snap and be to the midpoint of this line right here. Radius of 1.47. Now we should uh, we should make another three-point arc between these two points right here, which should also have the midpoint constraint. And then press escape. Now just to make sure everything is right, click D, dimension this from this line. It should be 1.475 because it isn't. We can apply that, and I believe that is all of the constraints that we need to have. Now, zoom out, and then press escape. Now we want to use the revolve feature right here. So for revolve, you can either click right here or click shift W to revolve this sketch for the revolve axis. Click that 10 millimeter uh, distance that we had over here previously. Use Shift 7 to go here directly, and then click Confirm. Now that we have this, use Shift F to start playing. Play all of the edges throughout this entire thing to make sure that the double is completely. Uh, flayed, and we want this to be a radius of one millimeter. 
now confirm. And then branch shift 7 to an isometric view. We can alter the, and then because these two are actually separate parts, we can alter the appearance of both of them. The This is going to be rubber. Uh, to be nice on the flooring. So for material, we can just click, click here and it doesn't have anything specifically to name rubber. Most of you can hear it is SLME call rubber. Basically, fancy number, fancy, fancy name for a specific type of rubber. And then make, edit the appearance to whatever we want for the purpose of this. So let's just make it black and let's make this right here let's make let's edit this appearance to be gray red um no and that is how you make a a dog wall in onchain please like and subscribe and have a good day